Hello and welcome to the Dan Cave and welcome to part one of a video build series of the Ayashima 2007 Nismo Fairlady Z. Uh, it's a curbside car kit in 24 scale. Uh, this, uh, this is part one, so in part one I'm going to look at getting the body prepped, uh, getting primer on it, getting paint on it, some custom decal work which I've done for a bonnet and roof, uh, and also the clear coat, which is a 2k clear coat. So grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a beer, whatever, sit back, put your feet up and hopefully enjoy the show. Uh, and as a reminder, Please like and subscribe if you can. So enjoy the video. Thank you. So as I'm starting uh, this video build with the bodywork, a good place to start is always uh, with the instructions, going through and making sure all the external body parts, anything that's going to be painted in the, the base color is picked out and removed from, from the sprue and, and ready to be cleaned up. Uh, so here I'm just uh, removing the side skirts, which will get glued to the body. Uh, and there's some arch extensions, which need to come off as well. So it's, it's worth doing the, the body work up front because uh, once it goes into a clear coat, that needs to sit for a few days anyway. So get all that work out of the way. And then, you know, kind of chassis interior can all be worked on kind of while that's sat securely away curing. So there's quite a few bits to glue together on this body because there's the front and rear bumpers. Uh, the bonnet's going to be left off separate because there's some custom decal work for that, which will come up later. Uh, rear spoiler, which will get assembled, and but that'll be left off until the end. Uh, and wing mirrors as well. So now it's just a case of getting into cleaning up all those uh, seam lines that can be found around the body. Uh, on this particular Ayashima kit, they're actually not too bad. There's not many of them. Uh, most of them seem to be hidden in exact uh, existing kind of panel gaps anyway. And here I am just going back to clip off those uh, wing mirrors. They also need a little bit of clean up as well. So I'm just using some UMP sanders to clean up the panel lines. Uh, I think this is a... 240 sander i think a uh, thinny stick so that just cleans up the sprue attachment points and any of those little seam lines quite effectively and, and quite quickly and then i'll go back over them with with a with a lower grade uh, eventually up to the uh, kind of buffer stick from ump so the rear spoiler comes in two parts. Uh, simple enough just to glue it together. Uh, basically, I'm going to use some Tamiya Extra Thin. And that will just get run into the join line between the, the two halves of the, the spoiler. So that will get mounted on something like a cocktail stick or uh, something to allow it to be easily handled and painted. And that will be glued uh, to the underside. So now it's on to assembling the bumpers. Uh, so I found with these bumpers that the, the overhangs on the front and rear wings were actually quite uh, flexible and movable. So, I mean, ideally, you just want to run a very little kind of thin amount of uh, extra thin around the inside. So you kind of leave the, the panel gap where it should be on the bumpers. But because there was so little kind of material and it was quite flexible, uh, it actually needed you know, quite a bit of extra thin and quite a bit of squeezing together to make sure there was a good join on them and they weren't uh, in any way fragile. Because obviously you don't want to damage that kind of glued join any later in the process. So this does come with a consequence of adding some extra work. Uh, ideally, you wouldn't want to use extra thin on the external faces like that. 
but in this case it was necessary to to get a really good strong join on those parts so really there's two small attachments in the middle and then just that bare probably two uh, maybe five mil of plastic on either side on the overhangs and it, it's quite flexible and moves about a bit so it was worth just spending a little bit of extra time to get them nicely glued together uh same process for the rear bumper again there's a little bit more kind of material to glue on but given its flexibility and the alignment wasn't brilliant uh again there was quite a bit of extra thin was needed just to get a good strong join on these that does come with some consequences which will which i'll deal with a little bit later in the build I mean, generally, it, I would say the fit is, is pretty good, uh, but on certain kits, I mean, some of these external panels, you can just glue from the inside uh, and you'll have a perfectly aligned part. The alignment here wasn't as good as some other kits, but it was it was perfectly acceptable. It just means there's a little bit more work later on to sort out those panel lines. So now side skirts are getting attached as well. Uh, similar to the kind of front and rear rings, but in this case, I can mainly just use some extra thin on the inside, and there's not a huge amount of remedial work to do then afterwards because there's there's almost no glue on the outside. I think on one side I did get a little bit of molten plastic squeeze out. Quick touch of a sander and a scriber sorts that problem out later. But these went on absolutely no problem. And you can kind of see here, this is this is pretty much where I get a little bit of kind of molten glue come through the gap, which uh, that'll get sorted later with some sanders and some scribing. So now it's the arch extensions. So these these were incredibly thin parts that the shape wasn't quite perfect for the wheel arch. Uh, so they were quite fiddly to attach. Basically, I'm just kind of holding it with a finger and just getting a small amount of uh, tummy extra thin under one part, and that kind of gives it a good anchor to sit to. And then I'm just kind of going around and just ever so slightly adjusting it just to get it conforming as best I can to that kind of arch shape. There is a little notch in kind of each of the arch extensions which lines up with where the the panel gap is on the the front and rear bumpers so that does kind of help identify which part is which and, and exactly where it needs to fit uh, on these arch extensions so again there is a couple of places where a little bit of molding glue has kind of come through but that'll get fixed later with uh with a little bit of a bit of scalpel work and some sanding work but all in all that the arches fit quite well they don't quite align perfectly on the inside but that's not really going to be visible on the car anyway so not too much to worry about so now all these all the external parts are all glued together we've got a complete body shell uh, the next step with this is to basically start attacking it with some some ump sanders uh, so first up is uh Got a coarse grit, I think this is the 400 sander, uh, so that's just going to knock back any of the kind of molten plastic that has come out. Uh, just basically get that the shape of the panels back correct. Uh, essentially, the, the, this is pretty much getting rid of the panel line that should be there, so this will end up having to be rescribed, but, but that's fairly straightforward. So, again, with any kind of sanding work, it's always worth. Uh, reasonably gentle pressure let the sander do all the work so we just kind of work around the area we need to work in constantly checking it so now we're in with a uh, finer grit here uh, i think this is probably an 800 or 1200 i can't remember which to be honest 
Uh, but again, it's just going for a finer grit, uh, getting rid of the, the deeper scratches, bringing it back to a much smoother finish. As I said, there's a little bit of mold and plastic has come out of where those those arch extensions are glued in. So it's a little bit of fine kind of pairing work with a scalpel to sort that. And then a little bit of sandpaper on a cocktail stick uh, it just gives that kind of rounded shape, which helps get into the little concave areas around the, the rear wing. Make sure everything is smoothed back to, to where we need it to be. And then finally, it's a case of going back and, and basically restoring the, the panel line that we essentially filled in uh, with the kind of gluing process. So And then the, the final stage of, of all of this is back over with a, with a fine grit uh, UMP thinny stick. final check of the, the shape and then very last bit is to run over it with the with a UMP buffer. And that pretty much would be the bodywork complete. Uh, all the seams removed, all the parts added, panel lines restored where necessary and we can go to the spray booth and start the priming process. So I'm going to use UMP Grey Primer. Uh, I've used this before under the, the colour uh, I'm going on it. Uh, so that works for PSI straight from the bottle. It looks absolutely fine. So today I'm using uh, basically a cheap Chinese airbrush, which I kind of use. It's got a 0.5mm needle in it. It's a, pretty much a utility kind of airbrush for me. Uh, I have a couple of other airbrushes there, but this one I find quite useful for doing primer work. So as you can see with the UMP primer, just laying down quite a light coat initially, uh, build it up quite slowly. Once there's kind of a good first base coat, uh, the UMP grey, you can lay it down reasonably heavily. Obviously not to the point that it runs, but it will go down very, very well. Uh, so that was just the bonnet being done. Uh, each of the kind of smaller components will get primed as well. So the wing mirrors uh, and the rear spoiler as well. All the same process, quite a light dusting coat first. I think it's probably around this stage that I start to notice I'm having some airbrush problems. I don't seem to be quite getting the flow I expect. Uh, so the under tray of the car is also partially painted in the body colour, so this is getting primed at the same time. Because this will get a coat of the same uh, base colour I'm going to use. Uh, a lot of awkward angles on this, so pretty much need to spray it from every possible angle to get into all those kind of nooks and crannies. Uh, but again, same process, build up that kind of grey colour slowly. Uh, the grey is also good for going over black plastic because it, it, it's easy to see where you're primed in. I think I'm starting to realise I'm having a little bit of a spray problem because I think in a few instances here I'm pretty much on almost full trigger and it's not flowing how I would expect it to flow. So I would imagine there's a blockage in the airbrush at this stage. But I'm persevering so I'll keep going. Sometimes you can get kind of small blockages which will clear themselves. So again, just working around, getting into all those angles, making sure everything is, is well covered. Uh, because this is going to be an unseen part and a little bit heavier. So now I'm onto the, the body of a Persevere with my uh, airbrush that doesn't seem to be working well today. Uh, just getting into all the kind of underside kind of corners that we want covered, uh, in under the wheel arches, make sure they're 
get a little bit of paint on them. But again, it's the same process as for the bonnet. Uh, start with kind of a light dusting. Uh, make sure we get the under sill areas covered as well. And then I'll start to work around the kind of main areas of the body. You can hear I'm pretty here I'm pretty much on full trigger and there's just hardly any paint coming out, so I definitely know there's a problem at this stage. But as I'm going for light dusting anyway, I decide to persevere. So despite being a cheap airbrush, it normally is actually quite reliable for something that's quite cheap. I also have a H&S Affinity and a couple of uh, Iwata Neos, which are pretty much a cheap airbrush as well. But I decided this one would kind of work as a, uh, let's say a primary utility airbrush. But today, sadly, it's, it's not working very well for me. So, so in, the, in the scene cut there, eagle-eyed of you will notice that I'm now using a H&S Infinity. That's because I did confirm there was a problem with the airbrush. Uh, I think I didn't clean it properly the last time I used it. I actually had quite a build-up of paint uh, inside the nozzle which was causing problems. So that's been set aside uh, to get cleaned thoroughly later. Uh, slap on the wrist for me uh, and we're back to using the, the H&S which with the 0.4 needle works absolutely brilliantly with, uh, with UMP primers. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. So now that we're back for basically the second second coat, uh, we can go a little bit heavier. Uh, the UMP grey, once you've got a light coat down, it does seem you can go quite heavy with your coats. As I said, as long as it's not to the point that it's running, you can have a I wouldn't call it a wet coat, but certainly a little bit wetter than it was previously. We've just stopped for a quick paint top up. Uh, I've only got a small cup on this at the moment, so. But for primer jobs, if you have a larger airbrush cup, I'd definitely use it. Certainly saves stopping and refilling a lot. So, UMP grey colour, uh, not the lightest grey. This is the final look. But I have actually used this grey paint before under this exact paint that I'm going to use. And I'm using Gravity Colours Calsonic Blue. And that's going to be the base coat colour for this kit. Uh, it's a lacquer paint. Uh, I think I'm spraying it probably about 20 PSI. Uh, so I've gone back to using the H&S for this. So this is about a day after it was primed, so, so the airbrush has been fully cleaned. Make sure there's no residue of that acrylic paint left. Uh, and then we spray some lacquer thinner through it just to make sure there's no final residue. And almost to kind of prime the internals for lacquers. Uh, and then straight from the bottle, the gravity colours go down straight. So Again, as with any paint coat, we're starting with quite light coats, but as you can see in the, the footage, the, the, the opaqueness of the gravity colours is excellent, so it actually builds up really, really quickly and really well. So you can see there's an incredibly light dusting going on, but actually that blue comes through straight away. Because we're, we're kind of putting on a quite a light coat initially, uh, it actually dries pretty quickly as well. So you can kind of go back over what you've already done, and that essentially consists of what I would call one coat. So 
So now, same process again uh, with the body work. So I've gone through and, and got all the kind of underside areas in around the wheel arches. And now I'm just starting to lay down that initial kind of dust light coat of uh, this calisonic blue. Uh, I've, I've tried this over kind of white primer as well and, and grey primer, and, and it definitely is a bit brighter under white primer, but I quite like the, the kind of depth of colour we get from the blue. So now this is coming in for the second coat, so you can see how well that colour has come out from just that kind of one one coat, uh, kind of light, kind of repeated light coats around it. Uh, so now this is coming in with, with pretty much a full on second coat. It's, it's not a wet coat by any means. Uh, with lacquer paints uh, like this, you, you don't need to put down wet coats, uh, but it is kind of a medium coat, I suppose, is the best description. Again, you can see how well that kind of colour comes out uh, very, very quickly just on this second coat. Uh, I think in total, I think it probably four coats, I think I gave it in the end. Just working our way around, uh, kind of going through all the kind of both sides, front and rear, and the roof and the front bumper, the top of the front bumper. So now this is just on to the very final coat of paint, uh, just making sure everything's fully covered. So the, the next section of the video uh, is going to cover the decals. So originally I wanted to do uh, a carbon bonnet. Uh, I do have some carbon decals, but I decided actually I want to do something a little bit more interesting. So decided to do a custom decal. Uh, so what I'm going to use is basically a kind of Marvel Avengers type poster on the bonnet and roof. So I'm using uh, Google Slides, uh, basically pasted an image into an A4 sized uh, slide. Uh, you can see on the right hand side you can you can adjust the size in centimeters to exactly what you want uh, you can adjust the height and the width you can also lock the aspect ratio which will keep the proportions of the image uh, how you want them uh, so basically i've picked the image i want uh, pasted it in adjusted the size for what i want and then i'm going to save it as a as a pdf file uh, download that as a PDF and basically send that to the printer. Uh, print it on an inkjet. Uh, basically treat the decal paper as photo paper. And that is the decal image I've printed. So now that decal has been coated with uh, Microscale's liquid dec decal film uh, through the airbrush thinned with IPA 50-50 uh, ratio. Uh, and now I'm basically just making some, I've made some templates for the bonnet and roof. And I'm just picking which part of this decal I want to actually use. Uh, there'll still be a little bit of trimming required, but this just kind of reduces the amount that's, of trimming that's actually needed by just getting a reasonably accurate shape of, of what I need for the decal. Uh, so I've, I've used an inkjet for this, and, and in fairness, it's a pretty cheap uh, entry-level inkjet. Uh, so I wouldn't say that the image quality is probably as good as, certainly not as good as pro decals and, uh, you know, any kind of professional decal company. There are better printers out there, but, you know, for, for what I wanted to do, this proved perfectly adequate. I just wanted to get this kind of cartoon comic image. Uh, and I thought it kind of went nice with the calisonic blue. Uh, kind of sits in, you know, kind of matches the colour quite well. So the masking tape templates have been well detacked so they won't damage the, the decal surface. And as with all decals, uh, same process. Warm water for 15 seconds. Just let them sit and let that kind of adhesive dissolve and they release uh, very very well from the from the backing paper so 
these Pomi decals, uh, once printed and sealed, behave pretty much exactly the same as, as normal decals. Uh, do exactly the same steps and techniques. So I'm just getting a little bit of micro set. Uh, just to cover the, the bonnet and micro set, which is basically vinegar. As you can see, that decal release is absolutely no problem for the backing paper. Uh, slide it into place, and basically, same as any other decal and any other large decal, you just need to kind of work it through, make sure you get rid of any air bubbles. Uh, start working your way around the creases. Uh, and again, same as for the bonnet, getting a little bit of micro set onto the roof. And I'll slide that decal off the backing paper onto the roof. So just making sure we get it exactly where we want it, and then we can, then I can start working, working them bubbles and, and working through the the decal solutions as well. So I think I've used UMP normal and probably some UMP strong, uh, just to work those creases out, uh, get it nicely conformed into the the roof gutters, basically. Uh, So now I'm just working that decal solution in, getting rid of any air bubbles, getting rid of any creases. And the same for the bonnet, just getting that decal nicely stretched over the, the kind of bonnet line. To work our way around make sure the edge of the decal if it folds over the edge just make sure that sticks down properly and that is the final result that is the the decal for the bonnet and the roof so now once that's dried for about 24 hours uh, it's time to start with the the 2k process the clear coat so i'm going to use pro range 2k uh it's a pro range mixes in a two to one ratio so that'll be I think I've mixed 12 mil of clear and then 6 mil of the hardener. So that's two parts clear to one part hardener. And then as you progress through the coats, uh, second coat, you'll add 5% thinner and then the third coat, 10% thinner. Uh, and so that was based off of uh, a video that Paul from ISM did on his channel reviewing Pro Range, and seemed to work. Seems to work fine. Uh, produces a good result. So now the first coat of two K is very much a, a light dust coat. Uh, really, all you're you're aiming to do with this coat is basically produce a really sticky surface. And that's what the next two coats of 2K will adhere to. And we're not trying to get that kind of deep shine at this stage. We're just trying to make sure everything is fully covered. Once it's it's fully covered, that will be left to sit for 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll go back in with the second coat. So for the body, like with the base color, I'm making sure I get in under the wheel arches, under the undersides, uh, just to make sure that that 2K goes around properly. And as per the bonnet, we're just putting down a, a light coat. Once that is left to sit for 15 minutes, that'll be really, really sticky. And that's why you, you need to have basically something covered to let that kind of body sit in. Uh, when it goes tacky, just to try and minimize the amount of dust that you get on it. So my entire kind of spray area has been cleaned and vacuumed the day before. 
the, the sheet that's under the turntable that's been wetted uh, with some water that just helps keep the, the amount of dust down and we're, we're pretty much don't have to worry too much about that much dust floating around in the atmosphere but obviously you don't want to leave the, the kind of sticky 2k sat out uh, you want to make sure that that's covered up and that just reduces the amount of, of dust contamination you'll get. You'll probably never get no dust. But you have to do as much as possible to minimise it. Because it minimises the amount of work that needs to be done later on. So this is still the first coat. I'm just making sure that every part is is fully covered with a, with a relatively light coat of, of 2k make sure all those angles are, are gotten to in and around the windows in and around the roof so now we're on to the second coat uh, and this is the first kind of wet coat that you're going to put down uh, it doesn't have to be too heavy you're just trying to make sure that it goes down reasonably wet so that there's no orange peel I mean, you can immediately see that, that shine is kind of coming through from that first wet coat. And this is where I've just spotted a stray hair, uh, which can easily remove a pair of tweezers. So again, just work your way around, methodically go through both sides, the front, the rear, and the top. And you can already see that shine is beginning to build on that. So the same process again, this will sit for 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll come back in with the very final coat. And this is where you can put on basically your, your final full wet coat. Uh, make sure there's no orange peel. Make sure you've gotten everything you need to have covered, completely covered. This is where, you know, the, the lights and the spray booth can be used to your advantage. Because it'll help you to see exactly where that paint is going down. And you can see that shine is already pretty, pretty good. And then this is the final coat of the the third and final coat of the main body. Uh, again, I'm just going in around the undersides and the inside of the wheel arches first. And then I'll start laying down that final coat along the sides. Up across the roof line as well. and make sure kind of bumpers and arches are covered quite well. You can see how well that kind of shine comes through. And it's on to the other side. So as I kind of work my way through this, this final coat, uh, we're pretty much at the end of the video now. Uh, I'm not going to hang around afterwards. Uh, you've kind of seen the process. You can see how well that 2K is, is coming out. Uh, once it's completely cured, it, it should look pretty much the same as what it looks like now. And that is that is the, one of the benefits of 2K. Uh, so then the next part of this video will, will probably focus on uh, the kind of running gear, uh, brake suspension, wheels, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I would like to say a big thank you to anyone who's, who's subscribed already. Uh, I know the count has been going upwards this week thanks to some good pimping from, from Paul at ISM, which is much appreciated. Uh, and if you are a new subscriber and you are watching, please, please give a like, please give a subscribe uh, and leave any comments if you want. Uh, all your feedback is, is readily welcomed. Uh, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this build so far. Uh, we'll come back to the, the body work a little bit later on in the build series. But I, I hope you can kind of see, you know, how well it's gone. And, you know, it is it's quite a nice little special little scheme. Uh, something a little bit different. A little bit of custom decal work. Uh, kind of push me a little bit outside my boundaries as well doing kind of a decal wrap in that kind of way but yeah so i've really enjoyed it so far and you know i'm keen to crack on with the rest of this build and hopefully 
the next part will be out in probably about a week's time so thank you everyone see you all soon